In this video, you will learn Flutter the fastest and simplest way possible. So first thing first, I need to tell you is I use the version 3.7.6, which is the newest version. So you should not have any problems. Next, I want to tell you that I created a complete checklist for this course on YouTube. If you don't have it on FlutterMap.com and the website has changed, you can go on slash dot free and you should be able to find it inside this thing. But I will try to put the link in the description of this Flutter checklist in the description of the YouTube video. Okay, so now that you have the checklist, what we will do is we will create a brand new Flutter project. So what I can do is I can close this one. I can close this project and we will create a brand new one. First, you need to open the terminal. So you will go inside the common prompt. Okay. And in this course, we will use Visual Studio Code. So I think it's way better for you to use Visual Studio Code because I will use some extension and stuff like this. So instead of Android Studio, use Visual Studio Code. And also I prefer this one. Next, what we need to do is to create a Flutter project. How do we do this? There is a way to do it and it's the good way to do it. So we would go inside the checklist. There is a section called Other. And inside this one, what we'll do is you find, start a new project. You just copy this code, okay? And this one will automatically set up the application ID. So this is a good way to start an application instead of creating the way without the application ID. This will save you time in the future. So copy this, and then we'll go inside the terminal. I will go inside the document I want. So you can see that I have a document inside my document Flutter project, and this is where I want to create my project. So I will go inside this one and to navigate, we say CD, and then I will say documents, oh, documents, and then I will CD inside the other folder, which is Flutter projects. And after this, I can create my project. So I will paste, which is this comment Flutter create org, your website and the app name. So what we do is I will delete uh, the website name and I will put mine, which is Flutter map. And if you don't have a website, which is possible, you can put anything. It doesn't matter. Okay. After this, you will need to put your application name. In this case, I will say Flutter YouTube. And you need to make sure that everything is in lowercase. And also, if you want to separate words, you need to put a little thing like this. Okay. Now I will just press enter. And this will create a project. If we go inside the file, you should see Flutter YouTube right there. Okay, this has been open. Next, I will close this and I will close also the terminal and we will go inside Visual Studio Code to open this thing. I will say file, open folder. I will go inside my documents and Flutter project and I will click on Flutter YouTube and I will say select folder. Great, okay. So at this point, I already have a emulator set up inside my thing. You should already have Flutter install and you should also already have the emulator set up inside your computer. So first I will close this and we will reopen it so you can see how it works, okay? I want to show you step-by-step step so you don't have any errors and stuff like this. What we'll do is you will click right there. You see Windows. We will click on this and you will click on start a pixel or start the emulator you have. And I will use the offline emulator. Okay. So I will click on this and this will start the emulator. I will put this on the side. Next thing we need to do is to go inside the library folder. So LIB, you click on main. And when you click on main, you will see that now you have access to the play button. And if you press on this, this will start the application with Flutter inside your emulator. And it will start inside the emulator because you can see at the bottom that we have selected the Pixel 6 emulator. Great. This will launch the application. Next thing you need to learn and know is some commands with Flutter. So I will press Control J and you see that the terminal will go up and down. Okay. And you can press also Control B. This will remove the sidebar. Okay. So we have more place to code. And all the comments are inside also the checklist. If you go down, you, sh you should be able to find shortcuts. So control B and control J. Okay. And we will use a lot of comments inside this 
uh, free course. All right. So I will put this on the side and now you see the application has been launched. What we'll do is we will minimize the terminal and the sidebar. I will keep it for now. We will go inside the Explorer and we have the main. What we'll do is we'll delete pretty much everything. This was comments. Okay. You see, I will delete all these comments. I will delete this one and then I will delete all the comments inside my code. Okay. From line 21 until the end, we can actually delete everything because we will do it together from scratch. So this is what you should have. Next, we will remove this and we will create a new file. Okay. To create the application. Let me show you. We will create first a folder. So you right click on library, you say new folder and we'll call this the pages. Okay. You press enter. And then inside pages, we'll create the home page. So you right click again, new file, and you will say home page dot dart. And you have to make sure that everything is in lowercase. Again, you see everything is always lowercase. And when I separate words, I put this little thing, then you can press enter. And now you have a dart file. That's why we put the dart. Next, you can say import material. So you can see that I have already a command. You should not have this. Okay. When I press on it, this will automatically import the thing. So it automatically import stuff and chunk of code. How to have this inside your computer. You will go inside the extensions and you will need to have the same extensions that I have the awesome flutter snippet. This is the extension that will automatically generate code for you. So you just have to write this by example, and it will write a big chunk of code. So make sure that you have all these extension. If you forget about the extension inside the checklist, you should have all of them. If I go up, uh, yeah, this is the five extensions you need. So I will put back on the side and the material icon team. This one will actually show icons on the side, which I think it's pretty cool. And the other extension is the better comment. This will allow you to create comments inside your code with colors. So you see, we have the red color, blue color and stuff like this. I like this one. So that's about it. We can go back inside the home page. Okay. And in the home page, we will press enter and write state less widget. Okay. So I, I will select this one, this one with the square and the dot under, and you should have something like this this class, you will write the name of the class. We will repeat this homepage, but this time we use, um, big letters. So home page like this. Okay. Capital letters. Okay. And every words need to have another capital letter. If you want to select both of them at the same time, you can press control D and this will select both of them. So you see, we write two things at the same time. Again, if you don't remember the comments, it's right there. You see, we have the control D select the next identical word. Great. What else we need to do? We need to replace the container with a scaffold. Okay. The scaffold is like the skeleton of the application. So we will put a scaffold and for now we will just replace inside the main in the home, which is like where we want to show the application. We will put the home page that we just created. So I will save and now you should see like a white screen like this. All right. So we will just put something on the screen. So at least you can see uh, how it works. I will put in, I will go inside the home page and inside this one, I will write app bar with the lowercase letter and I will write app bar with the capital letter. And now you see, we have already a problem. If we go over, this will be a section inside this course. Also, I will show you how to solve bugs by yourself. So we will go on the app bar, we'll scroll down and now you can see that the constructor being called isn't a constructor. So this is the constructor, the, the constant, we will remove the constant and now it worked. So let's save. I will press control S again. If you press control S, this will save. And also when you press control, control save, this should automatically auto reload, which will re refresh the screen. You see, now we have an app bar. Let's put some title inside this app bar. I will press control space 
and we will see all the arguments available inside. There is one argument called the title with the lowercase title, okay? And inside we will put the widget text. I will put the bracket like this. And inside the text, if we go over, you see that this will require a string data. So it will require a string. To put a string, you just need to put this thing and you will write, by example, Flutter Map. And I will save. And you see that we have the text inside Flutter Map. Maybe you have not seen it, but this code will automatically put the const when I save, okay? This is a tip that it's the best tip ever. If you go on the top, you will see that we have the auto const. This work with Visual Studio Code. And to have this, you need to control shift P. So I will show you how to do this. I will say control shift P. And then we will open the settings, JSON. So you can write settings and you should be able to find this. I will click on it. And you can see that I have this line of code. I will bring back the, the checklist. This line of code will automatically fix everything when we save. Okay. On save action, this fix everything. Put this on the side. For now, for this example, I will remove it. Okay. So I will comment this out because sometime on Macintosh, it, it don't work. So I want to make sure that we put the constant manually every time together, but one day you will be able to just put it automatic. Great. Now I will save and I will remove this. And if I, if I remove the const and I save, you will see that the const is not added automatically now. So we will need to write it every time. Great. This is just because I want to teach you further step-by-step step, everything you need to learn. All right. The next thing I, we need to understand is Flutter is widget over widget. Simple as that. Let's bring the checklist. If we go on the top, uh, it's not on the top. It's at the, uh, inside the other section, I think we have something called the uh, key concept. Okay, this is super important. Flutter is a widget inside widget or widget over widget, it doesn't matter, okay? What happened is we put one widget, which is the scaffold, then we put an argument inside. The argument is the app bar. Then we put another widget inside and we put an argument, a widget and like this, one over the other forever, it will create an application at the end, okay? So the scaffold is the background, the app bar is the blue thing, the text is the thing over the app bar, which is the text. Great. After this, widget always start with a capital letter. So you can see that all the widgets are in green and also start with a capital letter. So that's great. And all the arguments always start with a lowercase letter. You can see that this is an argument, this also, and they are all start with the lowercase letter. Also, perfect. After this, uh, this is the example we just did. You see, we have a scaffold, which is a widget. The app bar is an argument. The app bar, this is a widget. So just make sure that every time you have the lowercase and the capital letter perfectly set and Flutter is widget inside widget, simple as that. Also, there is a command called the control space or on Mac is the command space. Uh, yeah, is the command space. This will automatically show you all the arguments available. So you can see that after this one, this is the argument which we have the widget inside and we separate with a comma. After this, we have other arguments that we can use. And if you press control space or command space with Mac, you will see all the available arguments. This is super important. After this, you can click on one of them and you see we have the actions and you can stack multiple arguments. By example, I don't know, the brightness and stuff like this, other arguments inside the app bar widget. Great. You can see that this one is deprecated. So we won't use it and we will just use the title for now. You won't use always every arguments inside a widget just the one you need. Great. After this, we need to understand another thing. Inside this checklist, we have all the widget we can use or the widget you need. If you want to see how widget look, you can click on this link, fluttermap.com slash widgets, and you see 
we have visual, a visual representation of some widget. What is a column? What is a row? What is a stack, a center widget? And stuff like this. We have also the visual layout, which is the container, the list style, uh, by example, a vertical divider, how to put a text. We have already used this one, the text right there. And you can play with this. You can just see how things work. We have also all the user inputs that you can use, by example, a dismissible button and stuff like this. You can play with this and have fun, okay? If you like this, you can share it on, uh, your, web uh, on your website, on, on social media. It will be very nice from you. All right, so you can see that we have layout, visual layout, user input, show. If we go inside the checklist, so I will go back, you will see that I have separate everything the same way. We have the master layout, the layout, visual layout, and the user input and stuff like this. This is all the widget you will need to create pretty much every application. And inside this course, we will play with a couple of them. By example, this scaffold. This go inside the master layout because it's like the skeleton of the application. And all these widgets will be pretty much a skeleton of the application. After this, we have some layout. This will just like structure how we want to have the widget, how we want this thing to look. And visual layout is all the thing that have a visual. So when you put it, you see something on the screen, okay? User input will be all the buttons and text field that the user can use to input something inside the application. Then we have some show. This will show things on the screen, which is pretty cool. We will use the show snack bar later. Great, so you have a couple of them. We have some state, the stateless, stateful widget. We will talk about this later also. And we have the navigator. This is to change pages inside your app. So that's about it. You have also the section of, of Dart. This is how a value works, how to put a string, int, double, boolean, stuff like this, how to put function, class, pass data. Everything is inside this checklist. And we will work with pretty much everything inside this course. Great, so now we have this. The next thing we want is to create the application I show you before. So I will open it back, this one. So what we will do is exactly the same, okay? But together and step by step. So what I will do is first we will put the application. If we go inside the main, we'll go back in our app. You see that we have a debug banner, okay? We will remove this. If you go inside the Matteo app like this, you will put the debug banner, this one, the Boshak check banner, and we'll set this as false, okay? How do I know it's a true or false value? If you go over the debug show check banner, you will see that this requires a Boolean, as simple as this. And now we don't have it anymore. The next thing we want to do is we will remove the uh, material, we will put the material three, okay? Use material three. This is the new version of Android and stuff like this. So it just look better. I will put this as true also and save. You will see that the application has changed. Material three will be by default in the future. So it's better to put it every time. So now we have already, we live in the future kind of. You understand what I mean? All right. Now what we need is to put the following. Okay, we need these. This is a card, okay? So if you go inside the checklist, you can go and go inside the visual layout and we should see the card. This is the card widget and we will use this one. So I will go inside the home page like this and we will go inside the body of the scaffold. This is the scaffold widget, the argument but the, the argument app bar, but we have also an argument body, okay? And this argument body, if we can go in the other app like this, the argument body is all the center of the application. So you can see this is all the body. What we will do is we will put first, by example, a text a text and we'll say test. I will save, you see that we have the test. We can right click on text and refactor and wrap with a widget center. Okay, I will click on center and save again. Now the text is in the middle. This is the body. We can now remove this because we want to put multiple thing one over the other. For this, we need to use the column widget like this. 
So I will write column. If you don't have this, uh, you can press control space and this will show you all the widget available. I will use column with the bracket and inside we'll press control space and we'll use the children argument. You can use the arrow to select which one you want. We'll use the children and we'll press enter. Great. After this, I will put a comma because we have two brackets, one after the other. You see, we have the square bracket and the rounded bracket. So I will put a, a comma between every bracket inside the code. If you save, uh, if you format document, which is the command Alt Shift F, this will reput the code and put it, restructure the code. You see, this is better visually. And you have also the command inside the other section, always, everything is inside refactor. You can, uh, is it, ref no, it's not refactor. It's, uh, did I put it? Control space. Yeah, Alt Shift F, format document. Structure the code and make sure to add commas. Great. So this structure the code. If you can't find it, you can right click and you should see format document, Shift Alt F. Great. Next thing, we need to add a card widget. So I will say card with a capital letter again because it's a widget. I will say card. And inside, I will press Control Space to find arguments. I will use the argument child. And in the child, which is what goes, in, what goes inside the card, we will use the text widget with the capital letter. Inside, we need to put a string. So we will say hello for now. I will format document and I will save. When I save, this will automatically refresh the screen. You see, we have the hello. And over, we have a little card. What I will do is I will wrap the text widget. So I will right click on text and I will say refactor with a padding, wrap with a padding. And if we save, you will see that we have a little padding around the text. Okay. You can see that now we have some blue line. If we go over, this is just recommendation. It told us use a const, which is a constant because this will never change. It's just a text and the user input will never change this value, which means we can put a const like this and, and the const, we can remove this one because we don't need two cons one after the other. We just need to put it at the maximal le maximum level, the, the root level kind of. And now we don't have error. We tell Flutter this is a constant and this will never change, which means every time the, the user press on the screen or do something, if the, the screen refresh, this will rebuild this thing, okay? But everything that is a constant won't be rebuilt. Flutter will, will remember and it will save time to build the application. Okay, so now we have the card, I will save. And what we need is some image inside. Okay, so for the image, I have created a folder for you that you can download to have all the image. You can download it from this Flutter checklist. I just updated it and you will see you have now the images when you download this thing. Okay, so you should be able to have the same image. And when you download the zip file, this is what you will have. You will have all these image plus this text file. This is where I found my image when I need some of them. You have the Icon 8 website and the Pexel website. I will close this and I will show you both of them. First, this is the Icon 8. The only thing you have to do is you have to use the illustration and you can also, you can see right there, you have either icons, illustration, photo, music. I will use illustration and I will say welcome, press enter, and you will have a lot of illustration like this. I have found all of the one you have downloaded like this inside this website. You have also the Pexel website. This one will allow you to have photos and videos. So it's up to you. You can either select one or the other, but for this little course, I suggest you to use the picture that I use because as you can see, there is a, they are PNG image, which means there is a transparent background and we will need this. Okay. It's important. So you can use the same image as I do. So to use the image inside Flutter, we will need to create a folder. I will right click inside the Explorer and I will say new folder. I will call this one image. And inside we will drag and drop all the image we need. 
So I will take travel, yay, space and rocket. I will say copy, or we can just drag and drop it like this. And now if we click on image, we have all the image. Perfect. We cannot close this thing. We won't need it anymore. All right, so we have all our image, but now if we want to use the image, we need to tell Flutter inside the popspec.yarn. So I will go down and you will see we have the popspec.yarn right there. I will right click and I will go down until I found the section asset like this. Make sure that you don't delete stuff inside this file because uh, the structure of this file is very important. Like you will see, you will need to put your mouse just before asset and you will delete twice. One, two, perfect. Now we have allow the asset to be used with Flutter, okay? The next thing we need to do is to put the cursor after the hashtag, right click like this, and now you will delete twice. One, two. It's very important you do the same thing, otherwise it won't work. After this, we will delete this and we'll just keep the image folder with the slash, okay? I will use the control J to put the terminal at the bottom. And now you can press on get package and we should be able to use the image. Let's try this. I will close the popspec.yarn and we will go inside the home page and I will go inside, instead of the text, we will say image with a capital letter because it's a widget dot and we have multiple options. We can use network, which will be an image from the internet, or we can use asset, which is the asset we just added inside our project. Now you need to put the path of this, of this asset. You can either go over the image, right click and say copy path, and then you paste it, okay? Or you can just write it, it's very simple. You just need to put the name of the folder. It's image, so I would say image, slash, and I will use rocket.png. Now you see we have an error, so I will go over and it's a good time to show you how to solve error by yourself. So we will take the checklist, okay? And we will go down until we find the error section. It should be like this, the debug, okay? So you have two types of error with Flutter. You have either the error with the underline red, like we have right now, okay? or you have other error when it's in the terminal and you will probably have the red screen, okay? By example, if I show you, I will create a red screen error. After, after we have solved this one, I will show you what is the red screen error, okay? So first, to solve this one, what you need to do is you need to go there and you need to put your mouse over the widget red with the curly line. After this, a box will appear and you will scroll down, read the error, and this is what you should see. Let's do this. We put your mouse over, we scroll down until we find the error, and now we see the value in a const list, literally must be a constant, okay? So we see that the problem is about the constant. So what we will do is we'll go over and I will delete this constant, and now it worked. The thing is, this can't be a const, and we, we try to tell Flutter everything inside this list will be a constant. That's the error. It's a pretty common error, so I will remove this one. But now let's try to show an error with the red screen. So what I will do is I will remove the image. You can keep it for now. It's just for to show you how error works. So I will say a text and inside I will put, by example, a variable that I will create in five seconds. I will say string text is equal or string text like this. I will put this nullable and I will put the text inside like this. And I will tell Flutter this should not be null, but this is false, so we should have an error. So I will save. Now you see we have a little error. I don't like when Flutter uh, warn us like this, so you can go inside the run and debug and click uncut exception. We remove this. We are not stupid. If there is an error, we will see it on the screen. So please Flutter. <laughs> so please the uh, Visual Studio, I mean, don't show this. Next thing. So I will play. And now you see we have a red screen. So the error is saying, if I control J and I go inside the debug console, how to solve an error like this, you just bring the checklist and you see that we need to go open the debug console terminal. This is what we did. Click the, uh, the link on the top and it will bring you to the error. If you can't understand, Google search. Perfect. 
So what we do is we go on the top to find the error. We scroll down and you see that we have an error like this. We click on the first link, the main. Okay, it's not this one. We'll keep going down. And now we see we have another link homepage. I will click on this one. And to click, you need to press control click. And this brings us straight to the error. So we know this is the error. And if we don't understand, then we search this information. Null check operator use on a null value. And this will tell us the error on Google. We will do this later in this course, but for now, let's just remove this. And if you have no idea what I just done with the null safety thing, with the question mark and the, uh, the other thing, it's also in the checklist. So let me show you. In the checklist, you will have the null safety. If we go on the top, null safety is all explained there. So the question mark means that this value can be null, which I told Flutter. And then after I use the, the, uh, this thing, the exclamation point, to tell Flutter, I confirm that this value is not null, but it was absolutely false, which means it threw an error after. You can uh, read this thing to understand how null safety works. Everything is explained. Great. Now let's go back with our image. I will control Z and control Z is also a command inside the checklist. I will save and now we have the image. If you don't have it and you have something like this, okay, a square up, unable to load the image, it's either because you don't have the good path or it's either because the image has not registered yet. It can happen sometime. The only thing you have to do is to stop the application. You click this button and you relaunch from the main folder, you reclick this thing. This will relaunch your application and everything will work. Great, now let's continue. I will put this back and now we have the image. What we want to do now is we will use a widget to make sure that this go at the extreme, okay? So I will wrap the padding, or actually what we can do is we can convert the padding into a container. And the container, like the padding, have the padding argument but it's just way more complex than a padding because you can put other stuff like color, colors.red, and then your the background will be red. We won't use this, but what we will use is we'll use the width, okay? The width argument is the size for the width, and we'll use the double.infinity like this, and this will take as much place as possible. So what we tell Flutter is what is inside the card, the what is inside the card, we want this to take as much place as possible on the width, which this is what happened. For the uh, little blue line, try to solve it yourself. I will give you zero second because we will do it together right now. So uh, this was just to put a const. And how do I know this? You just put your mouse over, use a const, that's why. So Flutter will always tell you the answer. Next thing. We want to add two images back to back, okay? Now we can add image one after the other because we use a column, but now it would be nice to have also something to put horizontally, okay? So what you can do always, you can always go to fluttermap.com and use widgets, and you will see that we have a widget called row, okay? This one will be the perfect thing for us. And it's also inside the checklist. In the checklist, you have all the widget that you can use. You can see that you have the row right there. Great. So we will use a row widget. We will say row, and this is after we put the comma of the card. So the card is the first widget inside. We separate every widget with a comma because we are inside a list. I will say row, and then I will select the first one. This will automatically show us and I would press. If you don't have it, you press Control space like this. If I remove, can, when you press Control space you will see everything. So we'll use the row widget. Inside we have the argument, so Control space children. It's the same thing as the column. And inside this one, we'll use the same thing. We will use also a card. So we can copy this one, Control c and Control v I will put my comma, because always put commas between two brackets. Boom, like this. Format document, like this. And if you forget about format document, you right click, it's this one, format document. And now if we save, we should have something. So you can see that if I save, we have nothing. That's great. So that's great because I will be able to show you how to solve error yourself. 
And now I will just put my comma because you can see that we have two brackets. I put my comma, save, and nothing happened on the screen. Why? I will press Control J, and now we have the errors. Okay. I will restart the app just to see what happened. Okay. And now we have an error. Let's go on the top. This is the type two. So we go on the top, and the box constraint force an infinite width. Okay. So what happened is we have a row. This is the row. And inside we have the width, which is infinity. But the row is also infinity. So it's like a double infinity, which will crash the application. So we will remove the width and we will save. And now we should be able to see it on the screen. So I will save again. And you see that we still have an error. So what we will do is I will restart the app again. And now you see that it worked. That's perfect. That's fine. So I will press Control J to remove this. And if you want to, re to reset the screen, you press this. This will reset the screen and this will restart the application. Okay. This is the difference. So the next thing we will change the image. We'll use space for this one. Now it worked. And we want to add another image next to this one. So I will take the card. I will copy this and I will paste it right under because we are still inside the list. This is our first widget in the list. This is a comma to separate both of them. And we will put another widget after. Okay, now we have another problem. This means we don't have enough place on the screen to show the both image one after the other. So what we can do is we can use a widget called the expanded. You should be able to find it inside the layout because it's not visual. It's only to, to structure the thing. So we have the expanded widget. This one, we'll use it right now. So I will wrap the card. I will right click and I will say refactor with an expanded widget. So I will say wrap with a widget because we don't have the suggestion. And I will say expanded. I will save. And now you see that it worked. But we can do the same thing for both image. We can wrap both of them with the expanded. So I will right click, refor uh, refactor, wrap with a widget, expanded. So we'll use this one and I will save. So you see that now the image are way better. Okay, the next thing we need is to add the last image on the bottom. So I will copy the card one again, once again. I will go after the row because this is our second widget inside the column. We have the column, all the list like this. And this is our second widget. You can click also like this. If I click next to the, uh, next to the bracket, I will see the other bracket. Okay. So this is how I can visualize which widget are the next one. After the comma, we will put the card widget and I will save. We have again an error and this is because the screen is not scrollable, okay? So we can either wrap the column, so I can right click, refactor, and wrap with a widget single child scroll view, and I will save. And now our screen is scrollable. But the thing is, what we want is, if I go back to the other thing that we want to create, oh, actually that is what we want to create, which is pretty cool, perfect. So we can do that. I thought it was a different layout, so that's good. And what we need to do now is to change this. We need to have a text and a description, and that's about it for this page. So I will right click and go back inside my app. This is the one we currently create, and we will just change the image first. So I will say the second one will be, by example, travel, and the last one will be yay, and I will say, great. Now we need to put a text right under. So we need to wrap the image, okay, with a column widget. If we wrap it with a column widget, the image, then we will be able to, other, to add other widget right under. So what we'll do is we have the card, we have the container, and the container, uh, we have the image. So we'll use the image, we'll right click, refactor, wrap with a column, and now we can add stuff under. So I will say text and I will say, by example, uh, title. And I will add another text right under text description and put all my commas and save. So we have the title and the description. 
Now we need to put this as constant because this will never change. So that's good. The next thing we want to do is to change the size of the title. So you can go right after the text like this. You can put the comma and write or press control space to have all the options. And one of them is the style. This one will take a text style. Okay, so I will click on style. If you go over, you will see that this take a text style. So we use the text style. And inside the text style, what we'll do is we'll, we will press control space and we have multiple options. One of them is the font size. Okay, so we can click. And if you don't have this box on the side to show you more information, it's because you need to repress control space. Okay, this will show you even more stuff. So you will use the font size and the font size we will use maybe 22. I will put my comma all at everywhere. I will save format document and I will put this on the side because we will have more place to go. So I will press command uh, control B. Okay. So the other thing we need to do is to put this as bold. So I will go after the font size and I will, you have your comma, we'll press font weight, font weight, oops, font weight. And this one will use the, if you go over, you see that this will take font weight. So we'll say font weight dot bold. It's already, already a suggestion. And you put your comma, save. Now you have a title. That's great. What else do we need to do? So if I go back, we have this, maybe a space on the top and at the bottom. And that's about it. So we'll go back in the application and we'll add a space after the description and before the image. So I will go before the image inside the column. I will use the size of box widget, this, and I will use the height argument. And the height will be, by example, five. And then you will put your comma. I like to remove this one and save. So you have a little more space like this. If we put 55, you will see. You see it's a little bit bigger. Okay, we will do the same thing for after the text description. So I will copy this and paste it right after description. Let's save. You see that now we have a little, little more space. We will put maybe 10 and I will save. That's great. So what is good to do is to open the Explorer and all the thing like this, like 10, five and the numbers, it's usually a good thing to put them as constant. So what you will do is you will go inside library, you will right click and say new folder. And inside this one, but you, you will call this one core. We'll press enter. And inside the core folder, I will create a new file called the constants dot dart like this. So this will be a constant. It will be a double. Why a double? Because if we go back in the home page, you will see that the height take a double and the agent sets dot all take also a double. So we will say inside the constant double, this will be called the K double five equal to five dot zero. And you put your semicolon at the end. We have created a constant. We will do the same thing for a couple of them. So we'll use 10, 20, and maybe 40. Okay. So I will say 10, 20, and 40. So you can re rename them also. So you will use 10, 20, and 40. So we have created five variables or five constants that we can reuse throughout our project. I will close this and I will use them right away. So you see that inside height, I will say K double five, this one. And I will press enter. And you see that this will automatically import the package Flutter YouTube. And I will click this. If we go on the top, you see that this import the core and the constant. If it doesn't import automatically for you, you just need to import them. So you say import. And then you will just say by example core and so it's core slash or is it i don't usually import them like this so yeah you can use this like that core and constant so it doesn't work like this it works so you need to double dot use this and constant usually it will automatically import this for you so you don't have to to struggle like this and why do we put the two point before? 
This means we need to get out of this folder. So we are inside the page folder. We get out of this one. So now we are inside the library. And from the library, we can now access the core. Okay, that's why we need the two point like this. Okay, after this, we can replace the 10 also. We can say k double 10. And we can say that the eight will be k double 10 also. Perfect. We need to add all the constant before. So I will say const and I will say const and I will save. And that's great. After this, we need to do pretty much the same thing for the other, the other card. So I will just copy this card because we don't want to redo everything like this. I will just copy this and I will put it inside the row. So I will say, maybe we can replace the card, this one. If you remember, we just need to remove the, the width infinity. So I will save. And now, uh, actually we will do something even better. I will show you something, something new, okay? We will create inside the library, we'll say new folder and we will call this a widget. This will be the widget folder. Inside this one, we'll create a new file called the card widget.dart. And what you need to do usually is if you create a widget folder, every time you finish inside with, every time you have a file inside, you end with the widget. It's the same thing with page. You see, I, I end with page, we are inside the page folder. I end with widget, we are inside the widget folder. This is easy to, find out your folder after when you have a bigger project. Okay, so what we'll do inside this one is we will import M. This will import the material Flutter. This will allow you to use all the widget with Flutter. And the import M is used because we have the extension Awesome Flutter snippet, okay? So next we need to create a stateless widget. So I will write this and I will select this one, the stateless widget. I would press, and I will replace the name. So by example, if you, if you unselect, you can click name, control D, and it will select both of them. You will call this the card widget, just like that, the same name as the file. And after this inside, we will paste the card. So I will go inside home page, and I will copy this card like this. We'll copy this, and I will put that, I will put it, or you can actually cut, so control X to remove it. And we'll go inside the card widget and replace the container like this. I will format document. And you can see that we need to re-import the double 10. So you can just put your mouse over, you can scroll down and you have the option uh, quick fix. Quick fix is a good thing for you with Flutter. It will save you a lot of time. So you just click on quick fix and import core constant, just like that, okay? Uh, it doesn't appear always, but when you have the quick fix, usually it will solve your problem. Okay, uh, after this, what we can do is go back inside the home page and we can call this new widget that we just created. This is a custom widget called the card widget. We will use this one inside the home page dart and we will say card widget. I will press enter and this automatically import the widget card widget. We can remove the core constant because we will not use anymore because it's inside the card widget now. And we can put this as a constant. So let's save to see what happened. You see that nothing changed because it's the same structure, but separate into different files. So now what we can do is we can replace this card also, and we will put the card widget and this will create an error, but we will solve it together. So we'll say card widget. I will also do the same thing for the other expanded like this. I will put this as a const just before the list. Okay. Because all, everything is a constant now and we can replace this one also the card. Oops. This one will be just card widget. Great. We can put the constant and it's about it. So you should see all the same image now. But now you see how the code is way smaller. It looks just better, okay? And this is something you need to do because otherwise you will have a file with like a thousand lines. And this is just way easier to understand the code. After this, uh, you can see that uh, everything works, which I don't think it should work. So I will restart this. I will go inside the card widget 
and you see that this used the width double infinity, but it seems to work anyway. So I will press Ctrl J like this, and you see that we don't have any errors, which is good. So I will repress Ctrl J. And now what we will do is we will create a logic to be able to send the title and the description information inside this card widget. How do we do this? So I will bring back the checklist. And what we will need to do is we will go inside. There is a, a section, so you don't have to remember everything by heart. You just have to go in the code and you will find out, go in the checklist. So you can, we will create a class later, but for now, what we want is to pass data inside another widget. And this is how we do it. So we have two options. We can either go with the stateless widget or with the stateful widget. For this example, right now we use the stateless widget, which means the screen will never change. There will, no, there will be no refresh if the user click the screen and everything. So we use the stateless widget. I will go on the top. And what we need to do is we need to say required this dot title, by example. So I, I created multiple example. If you want to do callbacks, functions, uh, if you want to do a Boolean, stuff like that. For now, we'll just use the most simple one, the require this title, and then we need to call the final string title. We'll do the same thing. I will go right there and I will go inside the constructor. So right there, when we recall the name called card widget, this is what we call a constructor. It doesn't really matter. What we need to do is just put stuff inside. So I will press the comma, the comma and I will say required this dot title. I will put my comma again. You see that we have a problem. This is because we need to put the other part of the code, which mean is the, this, the, the title will be a string title and semicolon. Okay, we still have an error. And this is because if we go over, we can define this as a const because we need to put this as a final value. And if I bring the checklist, you see that I use the final string title. So I will say final before, because we tell the, we tell Flutter that this will never change. Once we receive the information title, this information will never change. It's final. I will save and format document. Now we can use the title inside, oops, sorry. Now we can use the title inside the title text. So I will remove this and I will just write title. And you can see that now we have a problem and this is because we need to remove the const. So you see, we have a problem with the const. We just need to remove this, save. And now we should be able to, oh, we still have an error. We need to fix this. But before we will put the text style as a constant so we don't have the blue line error. Great, I will go back inside homepage. And in the homepage, you can see now that we need to pass the title inside the card widget. If I go over, you will see that this required the title string that we just added. So I will go inside and I will press control space. And this is the same thing as a widget. You see that we have all the arguments inside that we can use. And one of them is the title that we just created, which is really awesome. So you can click on title and this one will require, if you go over, it required a string. This is what we created. So I will pass this as rocket and I will save. Oh, nothing happened because we need to fix all of them. So I will just copy this card widget and I will replace this everywhere. So the title will be rocket everywhere. So let's save. And now if, so we have saved the, the document, I will format document and I will click on this, the hot reload. Okay, so I think I've, I have already told you about the auto const. Uh, it is right there, the autocons. If you have this, when you save, it will automatically format document for you. So that's why I'm a little bit confused because I'm used to have the auto uh, fix and everything, but now we don't have it because of teaching purposes. So let's save this and now let's uh, the hot reload. And now you should see that it should be rocket. It is not. So what happened is we will restart the app. So we'll say restart. And now we should see rocket. Uh, perfect. Okay, that's good. Now we need to do what, what, we need, what we need to do now is maybe to change 
the description or maybe to add an image path because we don't want to have the same image. So I will go inside the card widget and what I will do, I will just change description for this is a description, nothing big, just it look a little bit better. And what we'll do is we'll do the same thing as the title, but now we want to send an image path. So I will say the same thing, required this image path, and I will say final string image path. And you can see, oh, this is a semicolon. Okay, perfect. And you can see that I can write pretty quick on the, on the keyboard, and this is because I use touch typing, okay? So if you are new to coding or you like coding, I absolutely recommend you to learn about touch typing. You will save a lot of time in your life. That's crazy, okay? I don't want to talk more about this, but it's something you should, you should try, touch typing. Anyway, so image path, what we'll do is we'll replace this inside the asset. We'll replace this. I will cut it first, so control X, and I will write image path. Now, if we go back inside the home page, you will see that we need to add also the image path because this is required. So if we go back and I, re I, re I remove required, by example, and I put this as a nullable value, so we can it can be null and I say, I'm sure that this is null. And I go back inside the home page, you see that we don't have error anymore because it's not required. I will go back inside the card widget and undo everything. So control Z, control Z, and control Z to make sure that this is required. We go back inside home page and we add it. So I will put my comma, control space, image path. I press enter and this will take what I just cut before. So I will press control V and it's the image rocket. I will put my comma also, format document. And now what we need to do is do the same thing. So I will copy this and I will replace all of them. So you can select this. Control D, Control D, and Control V. Perfect. Let's save and see what happened. Uh, actually, nothing should happen because we have all the same image. Let's replace this for, by example, um, it will be travel. The other one will be space. And this one will be yay. And let's save. You see that now we have different image inside. So it's pretty cool. Another thing that you have to understand is how to create class with Flutter. So if, by example, inside the card widget, we have like, I don't know, 500 arguments like this, it's pretty messy, okay? At some point, you don't want to have too much of them. So what we can do is we can create a class. A class is just a, a box. You can, you can imagine this as a box of multiple things inside. So we will create a box and inside the box, we will put the title and the image path. So we will be able to just send the box and in the box, we will receive the title and the image path information. So let's do this together. And for this, we need to create a folder class. I will go inside library. I will right click and I will say new folder. I call this one class. And then you can right click and say new file. Uh, let's call this one item class or any name, doesn't matter, the dart. You see that I repeat the class at the end also to make sure that we uh, it's easy to see and understand the code. Let's press enter and create a class. How do we do that? So you can open the checklist once again, and you should be able to find how to create a class right there, classes. It's as simple as this. So what we need to do is say class, the name of the class. And then what we need to do is create a constructor with inside we have what we need to put in the class. And then we just recall it. It's pretty much the same as the past data, but it's for a class and it's a box. So let's do this. What we'll say is we'll say class and we'll call this one the item class. I will open the curly bracket like this. Now we need to put a constructor. The constructor will use the same name, so item class, and you need to put the same name. After this, what you can put is the bracket like this, and then the curly bracket, 
and inside we will say required this dot uh, what do we put we will put the title and the title and we will put also the image path format document i will put my semicolon at the end format document and now we just need to put also the other part which is this okay you can see that we don't need to put final this time because this is not a const okay we don't say that this is a const great so what we'll do is we'll say string title semicolon and string image path semicolon easy as that now we have a box of information which which contain the title and the image path we can close this and we can go inside the home page okay or in the card widget sorry and instead of passing the title and the image path, we will pass a box, a box of the item class. So I will remove the image path and I will remove the, this one also. I will change the, the type for the item class. And this will be, by example, the, uh, we can call this the box, okay? It will be simple to understand. We need to change title for box. And now you can see that we can use the box the same way we did with the title and the image path. Let's remove the image path and say box. And then I will say dot. And now we have two options, the title and the image path. And now it worked. So we'll do the same thing for the title. We'll say box dot title. But the last thing we need to do is to go inside the home page and we need to remove all the titles and stuff like this because we need to just pass a box now. So I will remove this. And I will say box. Inside the box, we need to put the item class. So we say item class. And I will use this one. I will press enter. And you can see that we need to pass inside the item class, the title and the image path. I will remove the constant like this. And the title will be the same. So it will be rocket. I will copy this. And the image path will be the same thing the image travel or rocket this one. Great. So we have our first card widget that pass the box item class. So I will copy this one and I will paste it all the other place. So I will press control D, control D, oh, it doesn't work. So I will paste and I will need to re remove the comma, remove the constant, go inside the other one, paste it, remove the comma, and how do I know we need to remove the comma? If I do it back, you just go over the error, expect uh, expect an identifier, which means expect another widget, but we don't have one of them. So we just have to put one comma. After this, we need to do the same thing for the last one. And I will paste, remove the comma, format document, save. And now let's restart the application. We should have all the same image now. We should have all rockets. Great. So you see that we have done a couple of things, but nothing has changed on the screen. We have created a class. A class is a box of things that we can send. Instead of receiving multiple things inside the card widget, we just receive a box and we use what we need. Because sometimes you will have this widget and this widget will bring you to another widget, to another widget, but you don't want to pass like multiple things inside. You just want to send one box that contain everything. So that's why we did that. After this, you see that we have a long text. So what I will say, uh, I will put my comma format document. And now you see that it looks just better. I will put my comma right after the image path everywhere. Format document, save. Okay, what we need to do is now put the real image and the real title, and it will be good for this page. So let's remove rocket and say travel. Let's call it travel also. Let's remove this one. We'll call it space and we'll say space. And now the last one is the yay and let's call it yay also. Let's save this. And now we have all our image. That's great. If we go back inside the other application, what else do we have to do? So you can see that uh, when I click on one of them, or actually, this is the same one. Oops, sorry. Right click. Okay, so when I click on one of them, 
it goes inside another page, okay? And this is what we want to do. So we still have a lot of things to do. Oh, another interesting thing is this is this is the description of the rocket. This is the description of the rocket. Maybe we could put something. This is the description of the space. This is the description of the travel. So let's do this on our other app. And also we will need to create a button that when we press on it, it brings us to the other page. So let's do this. I bring back the other thing. And how do we do that? How do we send the information? By example, this is a rocket. This is a travel. What we'll do is we'll go inside the card widget and inside the text, what we do is we put, this is the description of, or this is the something description. And to do this, we will put the curly bracket. We will put the dollar sign and inside we will say box dot title. We will remove the constant and we will save. So I will restart the application. And now we should see that this is the rocket description. This is the travel description. This is the space description and so on. So what happened here? This is just to tell Flutter, okay, for the rest of the things, we won't put text, okay? So we need to use this to tell Flutter that inside the bracket, we won't use text, we will use variables, variables that are coming from the box, okay? So that's about it. Next, we need to create this as a button. So we will wrap the entire card widget. So I will right click and I will say refactor with a widget. So wrap with a widget. And this one will be called the gesture detector. Okay, I will press enter. And now I will use inside the arguments, we have the on tap. So I use this one. I will put a function inside. So you can see that the option if you press control space, you have two options. We will use this one. This is a function. So now it's clickable. But how do we go inside another page? First, we will need to create this other page. So inside pages, I will right click and I will say new file and I will say description page, maybe the dart. So I press enter and I create this page. First, you need to create to import the M import material because otherwise you won't have any widget and after you will need to say state less widget again this is the structure the name will be description page and the content inside this will return when we build this widget we will return something and the something will be a scaffold so we'll say scaffold i will press enter and we will also put a nav bar inside this one otherwise we won't see anything. So I will say app bar, the app bar argument and the app bar widget inside. And now let's just save. We can now go inside this description page, but how do we do that? I will close this one. I will go inside the card widget and let's bring the checklist. So how do we navigate? This is on the top level, okay? You have all the widgets and there is a section navigator. This is to navigate inside the application. You have all the code that we will use or can use. So you have three options. Either you can push, either you can push and replace, or either you can pop. Pop will, will remove the current page. Push replacement will remove the current page and push another page over, put another page instead. And push will just put another page over. So you will stack two page one over the other, but the user won't see the one in the background because it will only see the first one. So let's try this. You see, this is the code and I will show you how it works. So we will say navigator dot pop, uh, dot push, sorry. So we'll say push like this and you press enter. Now you see that we have the route. The context is just the information that we need to pass to the other page to make sure that Flutter still understand that there is a page before, okay? After this, in the route, we need to call the material page route. And if you don't want to remember everything like this, again, in the checklist, all the code is there. So you have the material page route. You, you don't have to remember everything by heart. So let's go back. Material page route. You will click on this, and now you see that you need a builder. But what is a builder? 
If you go over, you will see that the builder require a function build context. Okay, so how do we work with that? You just remove builder, you will press command uh, control space, and you will have the answer. So you will select the second one again, you will press enter, and this one will need to return. So if I bring back the checklist, you see, we need to return the home page or the other page you want. So we'll say return, and this one is the description page. Let's press enter. Okay, now we need to fix a couple of things. First, we need to put the semicolon like this, expect to find a semicolon. Next, we need to put another one, expect to find a semicolon. And we need to put the comma because there is two brackets, one after the other. Let's format document and everything works. We can put this as a constant and save. If we click on rocket, you see that we go inside another page. Okay, and we have a button, a back button. The back button is available automatically because we tell Flutter that we just want to push another page over this one. So Flutter will remember that there is a page behind, so it will allow us to, re to return. But what we can do is we can go inside the description page and inside the app bar, we could tell Flutter the leading, automatically imply leading, we, can, we could set that as false. So I will say, but now the thing is, we won't be able to come back to the previous page because we removed the back button. So I will remove this, save, and now we can go back. Okay, so for the next part of this course, what we need to do is we need to create all of this. And this is what we'll do together. Okay, so what we need is image, buttons, title, and description. So let's do this inside our application. I will go back inside ours and I will click inside rocket by example. You can see that there is nothing. First, inside the app bar, we will say the title argument, okay? I will press enter and I will use the text widget. Say so text and inside we will put the name of the current thing we just clicked on, by example, rocket. But we need to send this information. And like we did uh, previously, we can send the box of information inside this description page. So let's go inside the card widget and you can see that we have the material page route that goes inside the description page. But we have access also to the box. So we will do the same thing with the description page. You can control and click on this widget and it will bring you to the other page automatically. So what we will do is we'll create the this or required, we'll, we'll tell Flutter that this is required this dot box we will send the box to the description page so i will say final this was a night time class and let's call this box again great now we have access to the box if we send it from the card widget so we told flutter that this is required which means we need to go inside the description page control space and click the box and inside we will send the box information if you remember Inside the previous page, the home page, we had to create an item class to send the box inside the box argument. But we have already done that. And we have the information inside the card widget, which is the box coming from the item class box. So we can just send the box like it is, and we just need to remove the constant, format document, save, and now we should be able to receive the box inside the description page. So I will go inside the text. I will say box dot title. And now let's save. And I will go inside rocket. And you see nothing happened. We just hot reload. We'll reset the screen. And still nothing happened. So I will restart the application. Okay. Now when we click on rocket, we have the word rocket. We have the box information inside the description page. Okay, next thing we need to show the image. So maybe you can try to do that. Show the image, you will need a column, an image, the, the, the buttons we will do it together, but you can put the title and the description. Otherwise I will do it with you right now. So the scaffold have the body inside, we have the app bar, which finish right there. Then we put the comma and we put the body argument. This one will take a column widget. So let's go and take the column. 
Still, again, if you remember, widget start with capital letters, argument with lowercase letters. So the column will take the children argument, and then I will format document, and inside the list of widget, which is the children, we will put the first one, the image.asset. Inside this one, we will use the box dot image path. And if we save, you see we have the image coming from rocket. If we go in travel, we have the image coming from travel. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to put the text title. So I will say text and we will put box dot title. I will put my comma, format document, save, and now we have travel. Now we want to put this text way bigger than that. And we want to change the style. So try to do it yourself if you remember how to change the style of a text. Otherwise, let's do it. It's by using, we use the comma, and then inside we use the argument style. And inside, if you don't remember what goes inside an argument, you can put your mouse over. We need a text style. So we say text style. Inside what we will do is I will press control space and I will say the font size. And for now I will put uh, 100. Then I will say the font weight, the argument font weight, which use the widget font weight dot bold like this. And then since we have two comma, we'll put uh, two uh, bracket. I will put my comma, format document, save. And now we have travel. I will put this as a constant and save. Great. Okay, so at the end of this, we have bold. And I will put my comma for my document. And you see, it just looked better. Next, I will put this on the side. We won't need to use the Explorer for a while. So I will press Control B. So we have more place to work with. After this, I will change the font size for 200, by example. We want to go over the screen size. So you see, this. First, we need a single child scroll view. So I will go over the column and I will wrap this. So I will right click, refactor. And also you can do it in another way. You can go over column, you can click this little thing and this will wrap with something. Okay, so I will wrap with a widget and we will use the single child scroll view. This one. So I will press enter. And now with the single child scroll view, this is now scrollable. But the thing is, how do we make sure that the word travel take all the place, but just in one line, okay? For this, we can use a widget called the fitted box. So I will bring back the cheat sheet. And inside the cheat sheet, you see we have all the widgets. So this should be a visual layout, okay? So we have the... Is it a visual layout or fitted box? Yeah, fitted box is right there. So we have layout and visual layout. It's more like a layout. I put it like this inside the checklist, but sometimes it's hard to find the, the line between the visual layout and the layouts. But you have the fitted box and this work best with the text widget. So I will bring back this on the side and inside the text, I will wrap. So I will click this. I will say wrap with a widget. And this is the fitted box. And now let's save. And you will see that the text now take exactly the good size of this. But what we can do is maybe we can wrap everything with a padding. And in this way, we have it just look a little bit better. Okay. So I will go over the column and I will right click and I will say refactor and wrap with a padding like this. Okay. Here we go. Inside, we will use the K double 10. And you see that this will automatically import the Flutter YouTube car constant. Okay, and I will save. So you see it looks just a little bit better. Next, we need to put the description. I have a little cool thing for you. You can write on Google bacon ipsum. Okay, and this will automatically generate random word about bacon for you. So you can click give me bacon. And this will give you a lot of text talking about bacon. So I will copy this, this line of code, this uh, description, and we'll go inside the constant. So I will open the Explorer with Control B. I will go inside my constants and I will create one constant about, this will be a string 
and it will be called the bacon description like this and this will be equal to to i will put my this and semicolon and i will put all the text inside great but let's say that inside the text you have a thing like this okay you have a, you have this inside the the text so it doesn't work what you can do is you can use the backslash and this will tell the code okay this character don't use it as use it as a raw text okay so by example another another one could be uh, the the dollar sign maybe yeah dollar sign is don't work inside the text so what you have to do is you have to put the backslash before and now the dollar sign works so what I will do is I will remove all of them and we'll just put like this. Great. Now we can use the bacon description. I will close the constant and I will go after the fitted box. So you see, I always click uh, on next to the, the bracket to see where is the next one. Okay. You can see that this is the next one. So what I will do is I will use another text and this one will have the bacon description inside. You see that this is a string and it's coming from the constant. I will put my comma, put a constant before and save. Great. So this is not enough text. So I will add another one right under. So I will copy this and I will paste it under. But we will need to do a couple of things first. So actually we will remove this one and we will just make this one a little bit bigger. So it take a little bit more place in the screen. So we will write style so we use the comma style text style okay and inside we we'll say font size and let's say we will put maybe 20 let's find out what how it looks perfect so now it's crawlable and it looked pretty good so the next thing that we want to do is so we have the text we have everything yeah i want to show you how to put this uh, justify so the the text if i go back in the other app this one you see how the text look very straight like this this is what we will do okay so what i will do is i will go inside the text after the style so i always click to the bracket i will click and i will say uh, text align i click on this one this argument if you go over this take a text align widget so we say text align dot justify now let's save and you see that it look way better great another thing we'll do is instead of 20 we will put maybe 18 and we will add a size at box under the text widget so you see this is the text we will add a size at box and this one will have the height okay the height argument we will put the k double 10 so we'll put a little spacing of 10 I will put my comma and I will add another text description right under like this. There we go. Now we can format document. I will remove this comma, format document, put the constant and save. Great. So now we have multiple texts under and we only need to add the buttons. So what we will do is let's find out which button we have. First, we have a text button, then an outline button elevated button and filled button. So if I bring back the checklist, you will see that this is a user input and we have the elevated button filled, outlined and text. Okay, so we will use these buttons. What we will do is we will go right over the text. So I will right click, I will go right there, perfect. We will go over the title. So this is the fitted box. And then what we will do is we will write a row, okay? We will use a row widget because we want to display multiple one after the other. I will click on row and I will put my comma. I will go inside the arguments and use children. Inside the children, we will use first the text button. So I will write text button and I will press enter. Okay, for, for the unpress, what you need to do is you need to delete and you will press control space this will show you what you need to put inside. So we will select this, the second one, okay? 
and inside the child we will put a text so i will and if you go over you will see that this take a widget so you could actually put anything inside but we will use a text okay so we use a text widget we open the bracket and inside we will say um hello for now we'll just say hello bacon hello i just want to have a long word okay you will see why i will put my comma format document you see that we have two brackets i will put my comma there also format document again if you forget about format document right click format document it's shield shift alt f i will put this as a constant save and now we have a text button so what i want to show you is what happens if we have multiple text button one after the other so if i save you will see that okay we are lucky that work but if we had another one a third a fourth one and i save you see that we have now an error because we can't display everything inside the screen we don't have enough place so we could if we take the checklist let's go where we have the row we can replace the row with the wrap widget so let's use the wrap widget instead like this here we go and now you see that this will automatically if we don't have enough place we'll put the next widget right under so that's why i wanted to put multiple long text okay so what we will say instead we'll say small text or small title then we'll say medium title then we'll say large title and finally we'll say huge huge title okay because when we will press on the buttons if i go back in the other thing when we press on this we want to change the title for huge small medium or large i want to show you how to do this so i will go back in the app and first we need to replace the buttons with the good one so what did i wrote it was medium text large text okay that's good so i go back in the app and now what we need to do is we need to change the text button for the it was the outlined the second whoops cancel it was the outlined button the third one was the elevated button and the fourth one was the uh, fillet button so let's save now you see this is what we have but they are all too close to the other so we will put some space between them we can put um, a size at box between each of them and it will work so by example i will say size at box with 20 and put my comma and save you see that this will work or we could use an argument inside the wrap widget so i will press Control space and then i will say spacing and this will say k double maybe 20 or maybe 10 10 should work let's say and now we have a little space between each buttons it look way better great but now we need to change the size of the text when we click on one button how do we do this okay so first we need to create an int variable let's go inside the checklist and how do we create an int if you scroll down you should be able to go in dart in dart we create an int like this int value equal five as simple as that so we we'll say this inside the build but what happened is we can't refresh the screen so we need to refresh the screen and for that if i bring back again the checklist we can go inside the states you see that the states the states less the stateless widget can't refresh the screen the stateful widget can refresh the screen and we need to use the set state to refresh the screen so it's a three thing together let's move this on the side and you can go over the state less widget right click refactor okay and then you can click on convert to state fold widget great so now the only difference is you have when you use the box you need to say widget dot box otherwise it won't work and this is just because we use the state full widget in the state less widget we don't need to see widget so let's bring the checklist so you will know that everything is wrote inside this one if we go inside 
the arguments, I think. So if we pass that up, you see that this one is the state less widget. So we don't use the widget that something we just can, we can call title right away like this. But if we are inside a state full widget, you will see that the title in order to access it, you will need to say widget dot title. Okay. So in this example, you have both of them. I will put this on the side and now I will save. And what we need to do is we need to change the size of the text when we click on this. So we will create a variable right over override. So you see, we have the widget build override before the override, because we don't want to, every time we refresh the screen to reset the value of the variable, right? So I will say int, this will be, or instead it will be a double, sorry, because the font, if we go down, the font size is a double, okay? It still work if we write 200 because it's the same thing for Flutter. They will be able to convert it. So that's why I will go up and inside double, I will say font size uh, custom by example. And I will say this will be set as maybe 20 when we start or maybe more, maybe 25, a little better. And then we will take font size custom. I will copy this and I will go inside the title so the widget that box the title, the text style, and the font size, instead of 200, we will say font size custom. And now you see that we have a problem. This is because it's not a constant. We need to remove const, save, and now you will see that the title or the text should be smaller. Okay, now we need to change this when we click on the button. So what we will say is we will go inside the text button and we will say, um, so first let's do it with the field button. Okay. Because I want to show you something. We will go inside the field button and I will, we will say, um, what is the name of the variable? I will put this on the side. Okay. The explorer, the font size custom is now equal to 200. And I will put the semicolon. When you are inside a function, every time you trigger something or do something, you need to separate everything with semicolons. Okay, it's very important. Otherwise you will have bugs. Okay, uh, and anyway, Flutter will tell you. If I remove this, Flutter will tell you, you need to put your semicolon. Okay, so we have this, let's save. And when we press on huge text, nothing happened. Why? This is because if you go back inside the states, so I will go back inside the states, you need to use the set state in order to refresh the screen. The stateful, can be refreshed, but it doesn't mean that it will. So I will move this and inside the set, uh, inside the function, we will say set state and we'll use this one. I will click on this and inside the set state, we will put the font size custom and put this inside of it. Now we can format document and save. So if we restart the application, we will go inside, by example, the rocket. We'll click on this. And now you see the title is currently 25. But when we press on huge text, the title go to 200. And since it's bigger than the screen, the uh, fitted box will handle it and make sure that it doesn't take too much space. Great. So we can do the same thing for all the other size. So I will copy the set state and I will paste it inside the unpress of the small text. This one would be 25. Then inside the outline button, it will be maybe 30, 35 maybe. And inside the outline, the elevated button, we will say this would be 50. So let's save. And now when we click on small text, it's small, medium, large, huge. Great. This is how to change the screen with Flutter. So we use the state full widget. Great. After this, we need to create another kind of button. And this one is called the icon button. So let's do this inside the bar of the app bar. We will go there. And maybe another thing I want to show you is uh, we will do that after. Okay. So first I will show you the icon button. So we go inside the app bar and we press control space and actions. The actions is all the things that are at the end of the app, the app bar and we will put only one of them. We'll put only one icon button widget. 
And if you take the checklist, always everything is inside this one. So it's inside the user input icon button. Great. Even the gesture detector that we already used. I will put this like this. The on press will delete control space, and this will show us what to put inside. So I we will use this thing for the first time. And this is the same thing as the function, but you can only trigger one thing inside. And the one thing we'll trigger for now is we'll say print and inside we'll say uh, clicked, by example. Okay. And the icon, this is a, a little bit interesting, is you need to call the icon widget, but inside the icon, you need to put an icon data. And for this, it's a little bit special. You need to say icons with the S dot, and then you can put stuff inside. Uh, you can select if you press control space again, or you click this little arrow, this will show you more, the, it will show you the visual of the icon. So you have multiple icon with flutters. Okay, so the one we will use is the info icon. And then I will format document. I have two brackets, so I will put my comma, my comma, format document, and the icon, we will use a constant before and save. So let me show you what happened when we use the print function. Uh, we will open the terminal, so control J like this, and we should be able to, when we click on this, the icon, it will print in the terminal, the clicked. So let's press on it. You see, we have clicked. This is useful when you just want to debug stuff or try stuff. Okay, next thing, we'll press Control J again, and we'll replace uh, what we could do also, just to show you the difference between the arrow and the normal function. We could use a normal function and inside put the print just like this, put the semicolon, format document, save, open the Control J, and it will do just the same. It's the same thing. Okay, but you can only trigger one thing when you use the, the arrow function. Inside this one, you could print multiple things one after the other. That's the difference, if you see it one day. Uh, I prefer to always use this one, so it's very simple. So we'll delete the print, and what we'll do inside, we will trigger something uh, called the snap bar. So the snap bar, I think, let's go down, it's inside the show, okay? If you want to show something we will show the snack bar with the scaffold messenger. These two, you will see that these two use the scaffold messenger. And I have an example for the scaffold messenger right there. And all the others, oops, all the others don't use the scaffold messenger. So you just need to call the show something. You just need to call this and it will show it. So you have the two type of example right there. We will use the show snack bar. So we need to create something like this. Let's go and say, um, sca scaffold messenger, scaffold messenger dot of context. So of context dot. And you see that this is sometimes hard to remember. So that's why you will need this checklist. Everything is already brought in for you. Okay. So we'll say dot dot and we'll use the show snack bar like this. Okay, next inside we need to put a snack bar. If you go, you see that we need to put a snack bar. So I will say snack bar and I will press enter. The content of the snack bar is what will be inside. We will just put a simple text saying, by example, um, hello or snack bar. It doesn't matter. Like this. And then I will put the comma, comma, and semicolon at the end. Now let's format document save and the snack bar, we can put it as a constant and save. What happened here is when we click on this, you see the little snack bar at the bottom that appear for like two seconds and then it will disappear. It's two seconds be because if you go inside the arguments, you will see that you have a duration. And if you go over duration, you will see that this, oh, it's four seconds. The default is like four seconds. So you could change this, but we will keep it like that. It doesn't, it's good. And another thing I want to show you is the behavior. So the behavior argument, if you go over, it's the snack bar behavior. So we will write, we'll write that snack bar behavior dot floating. 
and you can now save. And I think this just look way better like this. Great. So you have learned how to create a Slack bar with Flutter. Okay. So this page is pretty much done. Another thing I wanted to show you was inside the app bar, something pretty cool. So you see that you can remove the, the leading. You could say, by example, leading automatically implied leading false. But what you could do also is you could change this button and do it yourself. So let's go inside the leading argument. And now we will use a Nikon button again, like this. The unpress will be an empty function for now. Okay. And the icon will be icon. And inside, if you remember, it, it's a little bit special. You need to recall icons, but with the S and say dot something. So we will say, by example, um, anything. So I will say dangerous. That's good. Let's put the comma format document and save. So you see that we have a dangerous icon right there, but it doesn't go back. If you want to go back to the other page, we need to use the navigator.pop. This will pop the page. So again, the checklist. If we go inside navigator, we need to use the pop. This will pop the page that we have pushed previously, which is the description page. Let's do this. We will say navigator dot up navigator dot pop like just like this and you put your semicolon save now when we click on it it will pop the page and bring us back to the previous page but if you do it on a page like this one the home page it will it will pop this page but there is no page behind it so it will just show a black screen so you don't you, you don't want to do that i will show you just to to uh, for an example purposes so Let's copy the leading. Let's go inside the home page and replace and let's go inside the app bar and put this. I will save. You see that now we have this. But if we click on it, it will remove the page, but there is no more page behind. So it there is an, an error. So you need to be careful with that. I will remove the leading of the home page so we don't need it. Let's go back inside the description page and I will remove the this thing. I want to show you a couple of things that you can customize also. You could customize the app bar by using the colors. So it's the background colors like this argument. And to, to change, to use colors, it's a widget and it's a little bit like the icon. Okay. Again, you have everything inside this one. It's inside the visual layout. Probably we have the text, we have the icon, and we should have color, yeah, color. So the color will use something like this, colors dot something. Blah, blah, blah. This is just an example. We should have a bracket here, but it's a little mistake. Okay, so we'll say colors with the S. It's just like the icons, colors. And then you will say dot, and you have all the options, okay? If you press control space, you will see the colors like this on the side, control space, control space. And we will use the color red, just to show you that now we have the app bar in red. Okay, another thing I want to show you is how to customize button, by example. We will remove the background color red. This was just to show you how it works. And let's go inside the buttons. To customize a button, we will use the elevated button. We will go inside the arguments. This one is a little bit uh, funky. So we'll say control space. We have something called the style. And inside, if you go over, you will see that this take a button style, but it's a little bit funky. As I told you, you will need to recall the name of the button. So elevated button, elevated button dot, and you will say style from, and inside you can change the, the look of the button. We can say color and just by writing color, we have all the options: shadow color, background color, foreground color. The background color is the background of the button. So currently it is gray and the foreground color is the color of the text. So let's say background color colors dot red and foreground color colors dot white. And if we save, you will see that the button is now red with the title, the text white. Okay. Just to make sure that you understand if you want to take the style to another button, 
let's go inside the outline button. I will paste this code. You need to change the name. You need to use outline button that style from. And now we can save. Okay, this is important. Uh, it will still work if you use the elevated button, but the behavior won't be the same. So it's better if you just recall the outline button. Okay, it's just a convention. Great. I will remove the style once again and save. And now this page is complete. Great. We can go back. And now if we go inside the other app, let's see if we have other stuff to show. Yes, we did. We have. We have this bottom navigation bar that we need to create. You see that when we switch, we have the home and the profile. The profile will just be a little thing. I want to show you this is one widget that is very useful with Flutter that I will show you how to use. And also I will show you how to create a crop image. So the image is now circle, which is also nice. So let's create the bottom navigation bar first. And for this, we will need to create another file. So we'll go inside our files. If you want, you can go on the homepage or anything, right click and say, close all. So we clear everything. We will go inside the library and we'll right click and say new file. This one will be called the widget three dot dart. And I will press enter. Okay. What is the widget three is this will handle the first and the second page. Okay. I will go back and oh, also another thing cool is I want, I will show you inside this video, how to create the dark mode like this and how to, how to do that. Yeah. So let's go back in our app and inside this one, what we will do is we need to create the bottom bar. I would say import M like this. And then inside this one, we'll say state less. Uh, it will be a state full widget actually, because the screen change when we press buttons. So state full widget, the name will be the widget three. Okay. And inside we will use a scaffold, scaffold widget, because inside the scaffold, we have the bottom navigation bar argument, this one. We won't use the, the app bar. We won't use the body because these will be used inside the other scaffold, the one inside the home and description. Okay. So the bottom navigation bar, this one can take two things. So let me show you the checklist again. This is part of the master layout. We have the scaffold. We have the app bar that I already show you. The, we have the navigation bar or the bottom navigation bar. So. The bottom navigation bar is the old version and the navigation bar is now the newest version. So I always prefer to use this one now. So we'll use the navigation bar inside. So navigation bar widget like this. And you see that this time the bracket was not automatic. So what you can do is you can remove a couple of letters and rewrite and use the one with the bracket automatic. This will automatically put the thing that are required. So I will double click on destination. I will remove. And if we go over in destination, you see that this take a list of widget. So we need to create a list and a list with Flutter is just the square bracket. I will put my comma format document and inside the destination, we will need to put the bottom. Uh, it is the navigation, nav navigation destination item. Uh, nav but navigation destination. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's this one. So we take uh, this one navigation destination and the icon. If you go over icon, this is just a normal icon. We know how to do this. We use icon and inside we say icons dot and something. So we'll use home for the first one, first icon and the label will be just home. This is a text because if you go over label, you see that this required a string. So now if we save, uh, we don't have an error, but we should have an error if we display the widget three. Okay. Let me show you what will happen in the body of the scaffold. So we'll say body for now argument, and we will show the home page. So I will say home page. If we click control space 
on home page, uh, control and right click on home page, uh, left click. This will show you the home page. Okay, this is the page we created, the one you see right now. So if we show the widget three, then the scaffold will show the home page in the body. So we will go inside the main file. And we will replace home page with widget three, like this. And now we will save. And now we should see an error. And the error, if you press Control J, you will see that this is the type two of error. What you have to do? You go on the top again, and you try to find a link that will show you the error. So you see, I, I click on this one, and it's a navigation bar. This never modify this this thing. This is coming from Flutter, so you should never modify this. We will go down. You see that we have a problem in the main and a problem in the navigation bar. So let's click on the main. It told us it's the widget three. It's not that. Let's click on the navigation bar. It's not that. Let's click on the widget three. And now you see that as soon as you click on this, it show you that the navigation bar is, there is a problem with that. So if you read the error, the error is available right there and also in the red screen. So you see that the destination should not be null and the destination dot length should be bigger or equal to two. So right now the destination are only one. So we need to add another one and this should fix our bug. So I will press control space and save. And now you see that it work. Okay, it's not clickable yet. So I will control J, control B, just to see better. I will put my comma after home and home, format document, save. And I will put also my constant so the code look better. Okay, we will replace the label, the second label for profile. And the icon will be a person like this. And let's say, now we have this. But how do we change page when we click? So you see nothing happened now. We need to go inside the argument after the destination, after the list of destination, we have an argument selected. So selected index. If we put one, this will show the profile. If we put zero, this will show the home. Okay, so we can play with this. Now we need to create a variable int that is the current page. We will go again over the build and over the override and create an int. This one will be called the current page and we will set this as zero when we start. So we can take this current page and we can put it inside the select index. Now let's save and it should be home. That's good. But we need to change this when we press on the button. So there is another argument called the on destination select. You can press control space. This will show you what to put inside and we'll click this one. So the on destination selected will return you a int. Okay, it will return you which, uh, which value you would just click on. So if you click on profile, it will return you one. If you click on home, it will return you zero. And what I like to do is I like to type to, to show the type of the variable before. So I like to write int value. So in this case, it, it will have less error in the future. Okay, for the value, what we need to say is we need to say the current page is equal to the value, but this will, this doesn't work yet. And do you know why this doesn't work? So you see, if I click, nothing happened, but the current page change. And the reason is, if you remember, when we use a state full widget, we need to tell Flutter, okay, I want to refresh the screen. And to do that, you need to use the set state. So we use set state and inside we put the current page is equal value. Now we will format document, save. And when we click on profile, we go on profile, home, home. But the page doesn't change. We need to create two different pages, the home page and the profile page. So we will go inside our explorer and inside pages, we will right click and create a new file. This one will be called the profile page dot dart. And inside we will put the import M first. And then 
we will need to create a stateless widget. So I will say stateless widget like this, and I will press enter. We will need to call this one the profile page, and we will change the container for a scaffold like this. Let's just save like this. And now we have this page. It will be an empty page, but for now it's created. We can go back inside the widget tree and inside this one, we can replace the home page for the, the profile page just to see what happened. So profile page, and now let's save. You see that we have now a white screen always on both sides. So we need to create a logic that the body will either display the home page or the profile page by using the current page. So we will create, after the, the end current page, we will create a list and the list will be a list of widget because the home page and the profile page are widgets because they start with a capital letter. And we will say this is the pages. And this would be equal to a list because we tell Flutter this is a list of widget. So we need to put a list. If we take the checklist, you should have inside Dart how to create list. So we have the Dart, we have the list, and you see that this is a list of bool and this is how to create it. So if you don't remember how to create list, it's available in the checklist. Also for maps and stuff like this, everything is inside the checklist. Let's go back. And inside the pages, we'll have two of them. We will have the home page that starts with a capital letter, and we'll have also the profile page. So I will take this one, and I will put it right there. I will format document. Uh, we can't because we need to put something in the body first. So I will put my comma and I will say this inside the body will return the pages and we'll say dot element at and inside we will put the current page. So this will either return the element number one, an uh, element number zero or element number one. So the first one or the second one. And if you don't remember how to use things inside the list, you have the generate dot land dot add. Actually, I should have put the uh, dot element at, but I forgot. So maybe in the future we'll add it. Okay. So you have the element at and let's save. Now, if you go on profile, you see nothing. It's the scaffold and home have the home page. You can create a constant just to remove the blue line before the list. Great. So now we are able to go inside the home page or the profile page and all the rest are, is still working. Everything is still fine. So let's go inside the profile. Inside this one, I want to show you uh, multiple things like how to create the image circle, how to add the list style, how to change the style of the application with dark mode and light mode. And that's about it. So let's do it right now. First, we will start with the image. I will go inside the profile page and inside this one, we will add the, um, do we need a nav bar? We have a nav bar inside the, the home page, so we will add it also there. I will say app bar argument, app bar widget. And inside we will say control space and use the title argument. This one take a text and the text will be profile. I will put my comma, format document, save and add the constant. Great. Okay, so now we need the image. So we'll go inside the body of the scaffold. So let's press after the app bar, we'll use the body argument. This will require a column. And inside the column, we will use the children argument to put multiple widget inside the body inside the column of the, of the body. The first one will be the image dot asset. And this one will take the, uh, we need to say image slash it was yay dot PNG. Let's save. And now we have the image, but how do we put a circle? This you will need the circle. Uh, it was the circle avatar. So if you go on top, you should be able to find visual layout circle avatar, this one. So I will go over the image. I will right click refactor and wrap with a widget. I will call this one the circle avatar. 
uh, save. And now you see this is a little circle. What we'll do is we'll put all the comma format document. And instead of using the child of the circle avatar, we will use, uh, first I will just make it bigger. So we'll say uh, size, so radius. We will put 60 and save. Okay, so maybe a little bit, yeah, that's good. But you see how the image go over the circle? Okay, it looked it look pretty cool, honestly, but let's try to make sure that the image is cropped with the circle. For this, you will replace child with the background image. And instead of using the image asset, if you go over, you will see that this take an image provider. This one is also funky a little bit, but you need to reverse image asset like this. So we'll use the widget asset image. So you see, it's a little bit funky, but um, you will remember when you use it multiple times. So the column will require a constant now. We can format document. Now you see that we have the image perfectly fine. After this, we will add first a sized box like this, the widget size box with the height K double, maybe 20, just to put a little, a little bit of spacing before the next widget. And I will put the comma, remove this one, format document, save. Format document is always this one, shift alt F. After this, we will use the list pal widget. Let's go back inside this checklist. Inside the visual layout, you should have the list pal. And again, you can go on fluttermap.com slash widget. And you will see that inside the visual layout, you have the list pal. This is how it looks. And if you have other questions like how it look a divider, how an icon look, how the circle progress indicator look, you have multiple of them. And again, you can watch all of them. If you remember, we have used the snack bar. This is a snack bar. This is how it looks. Okay. So I will uh, put this on the side and inside the list style, we will put just, let's see what we put in the other one. We have the icon and something. So Flutter map, web, uh, website, and email. Okay. So inside the list, I will press control space. And then I will say title. The argument title will require a widget, which means we can put anything, but we will put a text widget. In the text widget, we will say um, it was Flutter map. Yeah, it was just Flutter map. This was the name. So I will format document but we will put another argument. This one will be the leading, okay? This will be the leading, what is at the start of this list style. It requires a widget also, but we will put an icon with the icons dot person. Let's save. Now you see that we have the list style. We will do the same thing. So I will put the, the comma and I will add two other list style, one after the other. And let's save. And I will replace the text for info at fluttermap.com. If you have any question about Flutter, you can email me at info at fluttermap.com. This is the email we use. So uh, you can just do that. We will replace the icon for email. And if you have any question, feel free to just email us. We usually answer pretty quick. After this, the leading uh, of the other one will be web. And this will be the website, so fluttermap.com. Let's say. Okay, so that's about it. I think the only thing we need is a little button to change the style. So that is it. Let's go inside the app. That's everything. That's great. So let's do the last button. This one is pretty cool. So I will show you how to do that. And also if you want to have like this is just a surf surface level of how to code with Flutter, okay? There is way much more stuff to learn, okay? But we can't explain everything in like three hours or so. So if you want, you can go on fluttermap.com slash course and everything will be explained about Flutter. So that's about it. Let's do the little icon like this and that will be done for this video. So. For that, we will need to use the floating action button. If you go inside the checklist, you will see that 
in the widget, we have the floating action button. This is inside the master layout, so it should be in the scaffold. Let's go inside the body. After the body, we'll click on column, and after I will say floating action button argument, and inside we use the floating action button widget. This will take the unpress, so we'll delete and press control space. Let's take this, an empty function, format document, and save. You see that if I go back to the other app, we have now a button, but we need to be able to put something inside. And for this, we use the argument child, and this will take an icon with the icons dot, and we will use, by example, dark mode. I will save, and I will put this as a constant. Format document and save, great. But now we need to click on this. So what happened is, we will create what we call a notifier. So you see how we use sometime, if we go back inside the description page, we use the stateful widget in the, the description page in order to refresh the screen with new data, okay? This is a way to refresh the screen, but there is another way because right now we can only refresh the things that are inside the stateful widget. But when we will click on this button, we need to refresh the entire application starting from the main that use the team data because this is where we will change the team for dark mode. By example, if I go in the team data and I say brightness, brightness.dark and save, you will see that everything is dark. But we can't do it from the profile page. We need to change the value from the entire application. To do that, we will use a notifier, okay? A notifier is the same thing as the stateless or st uh, stateful widget with the set state, but you can use it as uh, uh, at any place in the application, okay? So let's go inside. We have the builder states. I think I put it inside this thing. Notifier, I'm pretty sure I put it. So let's find notifier okay the only thing i did yeah it's right there it's inside the builders we have the value listenable builder with the value notifier this is what we will create okay so i know it's really hard to remember everything so that's why i need uh, i want you to have all the code available so you can just look at it and don't have to worry about remember everything so this is what we'll do right now i will put this on the side so the first thing we need to do is create a notifier. We will go inside the core. I will right click and say new file. We will call this the notifiers.darts. Okay. Inside this one, you will call the value notifier. And this one will open the, this, this bracket. And we need to, to show the type of the value notifier. This will be a Boolean. It will be a true or false value because it will either be dark or light. So we'll say value notifier Boolean. We will call this one is dark mode notifier. And this will be equal to a value notifier widget. It's the same thing. Okay, value notifier, value notifier. And inside we put the Boolean. So either false or true. We will say is dark mode. We will say false when we start. So this will mean this mean it will be light mode when we start, and that is the value notifier. Okay, you see this is exactly what we did. After this, we need to create also a value listenable builder, and this is what we will do right now. I will put this on the side, and we will use this uh, after. So we will go inside the where it is profile page. So we can remove the description. We can remove the widget three and just go inside the profile page. What we need to do is we need to go inside the on press and we will say uh, is dark not, is dark mode notifier, which will automatically import the package. Okay, which is this the notifiers that we just created dot value is equal to is dark notifier dot value and the semicolon. But this will just set the value as the same value. If you want to use the, the opposite of the 
of the current value. So this is false. If you want to use the opposite, you can put this like that. And this will tell Flutter for a Boolean, we want the opposite of the Boolean. Okay. So this is what happened. If it's currently false, then it will be true because it will be the opposite of false, which is true. So we can go inside the main and inside the main, we will need to wrap the material app or we can, yeah, we will need to wrap the material app with the value listenable builder. So I will right click refactor, or again, you can just click the little light bulb and we'll say wrap with a widget. Uh, actually, this one is a little bit different. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to press enter a couple of time just to create it. And after we will just drag and drop this thing. Okay. You can cut it, put it at the end like this, and we will work with it later. So we'll say value listenable builder, the widget, click the first one, the value listenable. This is the thing we just created inside the notifier. So we'll say is dark mode notifier. I will put this on the side so we can see better. And the builder, if you double click, you can delete control space and it will show you what you need to put inside. So I will click on this and next uh, I will try to format documents so you can see better. I will put my semicolon and I will copy this. I will cut this, remove this format document. So you can see how it works. Great. Inside this, we will need to return and we will return the thing we just got, the material app. And I will add back the semicolon. Great. So, so now, okay, because we use the value initial builder, we have access to this information. You need to use the value initial builder to have access to this. It's very important. You don't need it when you want to change the value, but if you want to listen and see the value in real time action, you need to listen to it with the value listenable builder. Now, how do we use it? It's with the value. Now we'll re rename value for is dark. And we can use is dark, which is a Boolean. You see, it's a Boolean. We can use is dark to change the brightness. So we'll say is dark. And if it's dark, then show brightness dark. Otherwise, show brightness light and we can save. But what does this mean? Okay, it just means it's a if or else condition. If this is true, then show this. Otherwise, show the brightness light. And if you forget about it, I put it inside the checklist, which should be inside the dart. So you have dart and inside this, you have the functions. And you have also the conditions right there. So you can create conditions with if else, or you can use the condition like this with the question mark and the two points. Okay. If this is true, do this, otherwise do that. Great. And this, the double equation just mean this, if this is equal to this. Okay. So it's a, a question equation. So it, it's a question. If this is equal, then this or that. Okay. If you just put one, one equal sign, it means it will set the value. So we don't want this in this. So I will put this on the side. Let's save and go inside the profile. If we click on this, you will see that everything changed for the dark mode. But what could be interesting is you see the little icon doesn't change. It will be nice to have the sunshine or moon when we click on it. How do we do this? We will need to use the value listenable builder inside the profile page. So we need to wrap this icon with the value listenable builder because we want to change the icon coming from the is dark notifier or not. So I will cut this. So I will remove this one and I will write the value listenable builder. And inside the, va is, the value listenable is the is dark mode notifier. The builder will delete and press control space and it will select the second one. I will format document and inside we will return. So what we'll do is first we'll change the value for is dark. And what we'll say is if the is dark 
is true, so it's another way of condition. If the is dark is true, then we will return, oops, then we will return the icon dark mode. Otherwise, so you see we still have an error because we need to return the otherwise, so else. If it's not true, then we will return something else. We will return the light mode. So let's save. Okay, so now you can see that uh, it's the invert. So what should we should do, we should change the dark mode should be down and the light should be up. Or we can just reverse the is dark. So currently it is true. So if we put this, now it's the invert of is dark. So the icon should change. And when we press on this, we have light. And when we press on this, we have the dark mode. So that's about it for this video. I really hope you have learned a lot about Flutter. And if you want to learn more about Flutter, you can just go on fluttermap.com. And that's about it. I wish you the best luck with learning Flutter and have fun. That's about it. See you in the next one. Bye.